The Excellent Studios presents The Great Chase of Sodor, an original feature-length audio dramatization based on the railway series by the Reverend W. Audrey and his son Christopher, written and created by Chris the Excellent. Over the years, life on the island of Sodor has had its ups and downs. Engines and their railways have come and gone, many events based around these have gone down in history, and the island's railways have claimed the distinction of being the last network in Britain to heavily depend on steam engines. But no one on Sodor claims more distinction than Duke of the Lost Engine. He's been on the island longer than many of the present narrow gauge fleets. In more recent years, his experience and ability have proved invaluable to the running of the Scarlowe Railway. Although he spent a long time left alone in the shed, he's always remained a respected part of such an history. But early one spring, some of the other engines began to question his reputation. This was revealed when Ivo Hugh met Peter Sam one morning at the middle station. You're looking glum this morning, Ivo Hugh. What's up? Oh, I swear that Duke is getting worse. What do you mean, getting worse? What's wrong with him? He's past his sell-by date. That's what's wrong with him. Well, what on earth makes you say that? Isn't it obvious? He's been going wrong nearly every time he's been taken out of the shed. And this morning was no exception. Why? What's happened this time? Well, you know that enthusiast especially was due to take up to the quarry at lunchtime. And he's only gone and broken the spring and been sent to the works, hasn't he? Now well, I've got to take that train and take my afternoon passenger service. I was hoping to get a chance to rest in the shed between my two trips today. <sighs> What do you need a rest for? You've got plenty of life left in you. Who's been used regularly throughout the winter? But you're cheaper to run than some of us. Nevertheless, Peter Sam, I think it's time for that old war horse to be stuffed and mounted. <gasps> now, 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 look here. Duke may be old, but he's worth ten of you. <laughs> he's worth putting on a print more like. <laughs> Well, I never thought I would hear such a word against him. Just wait till the others hear about this. When Peter Sam reached the top station, he told Sir Handel about what Ivo Hugh had said. <laughs> Preposterous. Duke can't be retired. Why, he's a status symbol to this island. That's what I tried to tell him, but he's so wrapped up in his own silly mind that he wouldn't listen. Huh, if you ask me, I think I will Hugh's got a point. I beg your pardon? Well, think about it. He's been getting in the way of running this line all winter. Getting in the w- What's that supposed to mean? Hmm, let's have a little think about this. Who's brother leaking his tubes back in October? Who was sent to the works for a month for repairs as a result? Who came back for three days before he burned a hole in his smoke box and had to be sent back? Who filled again in January with one bearings? Oh, come on, he can't help his old age. And who on earth do you think had to go and rescue him whenever he broke down? Well, lucky that you were ordered to work at a quarry for a winter and to go to the work tonight. Otherwise, who would? <laughs> I told you before I was a full attack, Snowy. And who was supposed to control them? Look, just... That's all the point. The point is the Duke's old and deserves retirement before he becomes mere hazardous. Now come on, Duncan. That's too harsh to say about an engine that's put in many more years of useful service than you. <sighs> I'm just being practical. There's a real way to be run. Ten tables to keep. If you can't prove yourself useful, you may as well no bother trying. Honestly, the nerve some engines have. I know, Sir Handel. I know. I wonder what Scarlo and Menez would have to say about this. By the time evening drew in, the whole narrow gauge fleet had been informed about Ivo Hughes' views, and that night everyone in the shed was awake and arguing on the subject. You can't get rid of him, he's an icon! And, like most icons, he does more bad than he does good. Couldn't have been a better myself, he should have been retired long ago. Honestly, I thought you would have learned some respect by now. Oh, of course I have. I'm just saying that when your time's come, you've got to go. The way you keep causing rock slides, I should think that you'll go before him. Oh, will you just show your whole your cheeky little buck box? At least he's a sensible cheeky buck box. Look, this isn't relevant to the subject. Duke may be old, but he's far too valuable to be withdrawn from active service and live his retirement on static display. Ugh, the thought of it. Anyway, it's far too late to argue about anything now. Let's all get some sleep, and we'll say no more about it. 
Yes, Pastor. Oh, shut, shut up, Duncan! Peter, Sam, and Sir Handel were more worried than the others. Out of all the engines in the shed, they'd both known Duke the longest. They'd both grown truly fond of him, and couldn't bear the thought of parting with him. The next morning, Peter Sam spoke to the Fin Controller about the matter. I appreciate your feelings, Peter Sam, and I know that Duke is a valuable asset to this railway, let alone this island. But, if he continues to break down like this, then it would seem as if he needs to be retired before he completely works himself to bits. <gasps> Sir, you can't do that! He's too useful to be- That'll do. Now, run along to the wharf. There are important materials there waiting for the roadworks. Oh, but sir... No, come on, boy. Let's go. Before he changes his mind. Oh, all right. <sighs> Poor Duke. What's going to happen to him? Peter Sam trundled sadly away to the wharf, fretting over what would happen next. Simmering quietly on the standard gauge siding was Edward, who could see that there was something wrong. Good morning, Peter Sam. Morning, Edward. You look distressed, Peter Sam. What's the matter? Oh, Edward, I'm worried about Duke. He's been going wrong a lot of the time recently, and the other engines are beginning to lose confidence in him. <gasps> sure not. It's true. Arthur Hugh told me yesterday that he's too old and too unreliable to earn his keep. Duncan agrees with him, and even the thing controller said that he needs to be retired. Heaven knows what will happen to him now. <laughs> I had a similar phase years ago. The other engines thought that I was too old-fashioned to be useful, and some of them still do sometimes. But ever since I saved James from his runaway experience, this old iron has always shown him that he's still worthy to be kept in service. And I'm sure Duke will do the same. But how? He's broken down so often that his reputation's in tatters. Hmm, well if you ask me, all he needs is an overhaul to become as good as new. Easier said than done, Edward. How can one of us ask the thing controller to provide the money to give Duke an overhaul? It's hopeless. Well, cheer up, Peter Sam. Duke may be old, but he's still full of surprises. You just wait and see. Now I'd better be off. I've got to get back to my branch line. Goodbye. Thanks, Edward. But I don't think there's much use of us now. <sighs> oh well. I'd better just carry on with things, I suppose. Up the line near the first station, workmen were resurfacing the road where Sir Handel had a little mishap with George the Steamroller many years ago. The work required vast amounts of crushed stone, which were too heavy for the lightly laid road to carry, so the railway was needed to bring the essential supplies up in their ballast trucks. This didn't please the engines one bit, not because of the heavy loads, but because once again, George was on the job. He certainly wasn't pleased with the situation either, and made sure everyone else was aware of that. <laughs> you took your time, didn't you? I had to wait for Scarlow to pass at the last station. I can't help it if you're kept waiting for me. Excuses, excuses. This wouldn't have happened if we were being supplied by lorries. Well, you're not being supplied by lorries. You're being supplied by the superiors. Superiors? Superiors? The only thing superior about you is that you break down a lot easier. And how would you get a lorry up here? The roads are more dangerous than you are with some traffic cones. <laughs> what? How did you find out about that? This is a very small island, George. World gets around very quickly. Now, do you want these materials or not? We'll take as long as we like to unload this lot, thank you very much. Perhaps it might teach you to see what it's like to be held up. All right, all right. Stop moaning, George. Workmen spun the wheels on the ballast hoppers, which discharged their loads quickly onto the roadside. Peter Sam waited all the while, his boiler hissing impatiently, while George continued to taunt and torment. <laughs> Speak for yourself! You couldn't even have run a hedgehog pulling a cart! No wonder you're taking so long! Now, if you excuse me, I've got better thing to do than argue with you! Oh, how dare you! George went about his work in a huff, thinking of ways to pay the engines out. But he didn't have to think for long. His manager came soon to inspect the work. Mr. Albert, you have a new chap. Oh, George, my boy. How's work coming? Terrible. I'm sick of it. 
filling up these old moving kettles, holding me up all the time. Are you forgetting something, George? You're a moving kettle too, you know. <laughs> Shut up! You know exactly what I'm talking about. They've held us up with the past three minutes, and we've still got tons of work to do. They're costing us so much money, I'm having to pay the bills with my own money. But do not despair. I've taken the liberty of <coughs> obtaining an articulated lorry to send us the goods from Croven instead of those old tubs. I've managed to convince the Transport Ministry that we can save time and money on this job with the use of our own equipment instead of depending on the railway to supply us. The roads may be dangerous, but this lorry has been specially designed to cope with the bends. Obtaining? Do you mean stolen or bought? Who cares and how he got it? Ah, so no more having to put up with waiting for with them. When does that lorry arrive? Good morning. His name is Ranger. He's a ruthless brute with no liking for railways. So he should be ideal for giving us the edge. Please make me happy already. Meanwhile, at the big station on the main line, the fat controller, Sir Topham Hat, is in his office going through his daily post. Right, let's see what we got here then. Bill, 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 bank statement, junk mail, Bill, you may have already won £10,000, your car is being towed. Oh, honestly, some things never cease to make life difficult. Uh, uh, hang on a second, what's this? Sir Topham Hatton Associates? Private? Hmm, I wonder what sort of surprise lies in here then. Dear Sir Topham Hatch, the National Gallery in London is due to undergo renovation work between the dates of the 23rd of April and the 31st of May. Workers will see the vast majority of the gallery out of commission. This will require the removal of many famous and priceless works of art. Such valuable items need a secure place to be stored for the duration of the work. I have heard you have many quarries and mines under ownership and control of your railway company. If you can find a suitable location to securely store the artwork, both you and your colleagues will be rewarded greatly for your troubles. If you wish to get in contact with me on this matter, please get in touch with me via the attached means as quickly as possible. Yours truly, Jim Higgett, Head of Collections. Well, goodness me, that is a surprise. He wasted no time in picking up the telephone and calling the Fing Controller. Come in. Uh, good morning, sir. Ah, good morning. Thank you for coming so quickly. Uh, please, take a seat. Now, what I'm about to tell you is strictly top secret. Sir? I've recently been contacted by an art gallery in London. They say they want to store a priceless collection of their paintings on the island while they're rebuilding their museum. Yes, I see. Uh, how does this concern me, though, sir? Well, you have a vast slate quarry on your railway, don't you? Please tell me, what would you say if that was to house the paintings for a few weeks? If we take them up on their offer, we'll be rewarded greatly. I'd be honoured, sir. Oh, that is fantastic! Now then, we'll need to handle this very carefully. We cannot risk letting the whole island know that a priceless collection of art is coming to Shodor. After all, word gets around here very quickly these days. Remember how everyone found out about my weight problem? Oh, that was really surprising. I, I really thought no one would notice. I really did. Quite, sir. I suggest we undertake the shipment at night, and only inform those who are transporting it to the quarry. My thoughts precisely. I'll get one of my engines to take it from the mainland to the workstation. There, it will be exchanged onto the Scarlowy line, and an engine of your choice will take it the rest of the way. According to this map, there's an old cavern in the quarry that's been empty for a long time. They could be stored in there. When does the shipment come in? As soon as I make the arrangements with the gallery, my dear man, I'll let you know the date as soon as possible. And remember, maximum security. You got that? By all means, leave it to me, sir. The Fat Controller immediately telephoned the gallery and scheduled the time for the shipment to take place. The next morning, Duke came back from the works. Peter Sam and Sir Handel greeted him warmly, while the others remained ungratefully silent. Oh, Grandpa, it's good to have you back again. It's good to be back again. I feel as good as new. So on the last turn, what have you been Spanish, Duncan. Yes, Duncan. I know what you think of me, but there's no call for disrespect. After all, it would never suit his grace. Exactly. We're all glad to see you again, Duke. 
Let's just hope the works have fixed you properly this time. Famous last words. <coughs> it's true, though! That'll do, Ivo Hugh. All the same, Duke, I think it might be wise to give you a chance to run in properly before you're put into regular use again. Certainly, sir. A wise choice. Ah, excellent. You can start by taking the works train up to the road. You think that's wise, sir? Well, he hardly seen you, will he? <laughs> Duke's fire was soon lit, and carefully the five had built up the pressure, letting the warmth gradually spread through his boiler. Eventually he had steam up, and moved off to collect his trucks. But when he reached the wharf, he was in for a nasty surprise. Did I say, what's that lorry doing? I don't recall seeing him here before. Excuse me! I say! What on earth do you think you're- Push off! I don't take kindly to anything that runs on rails. What are you doing with my goods? Yours? Who's to say it's yours? I've got orders from the transport ministry declaring that these materials are now mine to deliver. Oh yeah? And just why the hell should we believe you then? Because we've got proof right here on this piece of paper. <laughs> yeah, not so fast, are you? What's going on here? Why aren't you being loaded up, Duke? Because I've just requisitioned the goods with my latest investment here. Oh, Mr. Albert, I thought you might have something to do with this. What method of stealing have you come up with this time? My method of stealing, as you so crudely put it, is this. May I introduce Ranger, the latest acquisition to my fleet. How do you do? Not very well from the looks of you. <laughs> now look here! You know that this work has been assigned to us. You can't take it without authority. Here's my authority then. Read this letter and everything will be explained to you very clearly. Now, if you'll excuse us, we have work to do. Exactly. We can't waste time enjoying ourselves like you railway types do. Ooh. You'll come to a sorry end with that attitude. Maybe, but I won't come to a sorry end as soon as you will. <laughs> See you on the scrap heap. <laughs> Will he ever be stopped? No, oh, not to worry, sir. You can't be blamed for him. I suppose you're right. But I think you shall have to handle the slate trains for the rest of the day. There's nothing else for you to do here. I'd better get back to the office, though. I need to have a word with the transport ministers about this. I dare say that was an unexpected start to the day. Yeah, you're telling me. Ah, well. Better gather up some of these empty trucks and we'll head for the quarry as soon as we can. The new arrival on the scene had already caused a disturbance, but Duke took no notice of Ranger's actions and went about his work. Up at the roadworks, Ranger arrived on the site much to George's delight. Oh, goody. Just my luck, working right next to a railway line. Ah, don't worry about it. You'll be ripped up one of these days. Is that so? It will if you and I have anything to do with it. <laughs> <laughs> I see you two are already seeing eye to eye. Ranger, this is George, my steamroller. George, this is Ranger. You hate these railways too, huh? Oh, absolutely. Whatever all these tourists see in the I don't know. They'll come round one day, even if it's the last thing we do. Right then, Ranger. Since you've made a good stop at getting our supplies for the day, I've got another little job for you. With the help of another letter from the Minister. You could be in to make a bit of money as well as save some. Meanwhile, Duke was heading up to the quarry with some empty trucks, when he met Sir Handel at the middle station. What's up, Duke? You look as if you've seen a ghost. Worse, a new enemy. I had a spot of bother this morning at the wharf with a new lorry. He's taken our traffic from the roadworks without warning. Huh. At least we don't have to speak to George anymore. Good riddance, that's what I say. True, but it was rather unexpected, I must say. I wouldn't be surprised if he pulled off another trick like that very soon. And he was right. When he arrived at the quarry, Duke was surprised to find Ranger there being loaded with slate. What on earth? What are you doing with that slate? What do you think I'm doing? Cutting it? I'm taking it down to the wharf. But that's our job. Not anymore, it isn't. Show this letter to your controller and all will be explained. But 
This is ridiculous. You can't just go taking our work without warning. Oh, I'm sorry. I completely forgot that I was supposed to give you warning that you're becoming quickly useless and heading for the scrap line, you pansy. Here, what's going on, Grandpuff? Grandpuff? <laughs> is that what you call him? Oh, it definitely suits him. Now look here! Sorry, can't stop wasting time like you do. Got work to do. See you later, Grandpuff. <laughs> that said, Ranger raced out of the corner with his trailer piled high with slate. The engines were lost for words. I thought he would try that trick again. You mean he's tried it before? Well, he's already put me out of supply in the roadworks. And both times he's taken us unaware. There's something very fishy going on here. The story of the day's events soon spread around the island. The next morning, Bertie the bus was talking to Thomas about it. Ranger? I can't say a word about it. He's a lawyer who's been taking away work on the Scarlowy line. He's a nasty piece of work with less road manners than a taxi driver. He nearly ran me off the road near a cliff this morning. If I'd have gone over the edge, all of my passengers would have been taken with me. Goodness, he's giving the roads a bad name. Wait until the others hear about this. When Thomas reached the junction, he found Henry, who was taking on water and in a foul mood. What's the matter, Henry? <sighs> it's that new lorry. He's a real cheeky old so-and-so. You've heard about Ranger? Heard about him? As I passed the wharf earlier on, he called me a giant metal grasshopper. What nerve he's got, honestly. Indeed. I wouldn't like to meet him in a hurry. And by now, Thomas wasn't the only one that was concerned. That evening, back at the sheds on the Scarlowy line, everyone was talking in fury about Ranger. I'll tell you, things are getting mad since he arrived. He carries on with this till we nothing left for us today. He certainly sounds like an unpleasant character. Unpleasant. Unpleasant. He's downright outrageous. He called me a little red rust bucket as I passed him in George earlier. George is bad enough, but Ranger's something else. Oh, surely he can't put us all out of a job. Not as long as we can still take passengers to the lake and back. Yes, but we still need that slate. We're lucky enough that we still need to help shelter the quarry. Yes, and if that job goes to someone else, then there goes a big piece of our income altogether. Oh, come on, Sir Andal. How can one lorry take away all of our slate traffic? What if his owners decide to buy more? Exactly. We can't survive on passengers alone. Look at what happened to the Mid-Sodor line. <sighs> Let's hope he doesn't come to that. It would never suit his grace. All of the engines slept uncomfortably that night, dreading the worst. The next morning, Duke was taking on water the quarry when the Finn Controller came to see him. Ah, Duke, I'm glad I've caught you. Sir, is this Ranger fellow going to carry on like this? I've no idea. But I've spoken to the Transport Minister, and he doesn't recall ever sending any letters of authority to Mr. Albert. I've got a sneaky feeling that he didn't gain this work legally. But that's not what I came to talk to you about. I've got a special assignment for you, Duke, which is strictly top secret. Whatever I say to you must be kept to yourself, understand? No worries, sir. You can rely on us. Myself and the Fat Controller were recently contacted by an art gallery in London, saying that they need to move a vast and priceless collection of paintings to a safe place while they're renovating their museum. They've asked us if we can hold them here in one of our caverns for safekeeping. We've accepted the offer, but the shipment must take place under cover of darkness and with maximum security. I want you, Duke, to take them from Gate to here when it's dark and there's nobody about. My word! This is a big surprise! When are the paintings arriving, sir? They're being shipped from the mainland in two days' time. And I'm sure that you can keep your word that this will be kept as a secret between ourselves? Absolutely, sir. You can depend on me. There's a good engine. I knew I could rely on you. But unfortunately for him, the Fin Controller didn't realize that Ranger was resting close by. A priceless collection of paintings, he says. Sounds like a wonderful opportunity for us. I better go and tell Mr. Albert. He crept out of the quarry unnoticed and raced away to tell Mr. Albert. At the roadworks, George was being as rude as ever. Railways are no good, sir. Road. Triple X 
Hickety Clack, sell up a strap, and we'll take all their loads! <laughs> You'll be sorry for this, George. <laughs> How's the work coming along, George, my boy? Everything going well, I trust? Oh, very nicely, sir. Very nicely indeed, if I don't mind saying so myself. If all goes well, sir, we'll be finished by the end of the week, we soon shall. Excellent. Bringing in Ranger was the best thing I've done in a long time. And it's just the beginning. One day we'll make a fortune change things away from the rail. Sir, sir, you've got to hear this. You'll never guess what's happening in two days' time. What's that, Ranger, my boy? Sir, the railway's got a load of priceless paintings being moved up from London for storage in the quarry. They're taking it during the night. Really? Well, if they're priceless, we'll just have to write another little letter to the minister. Wait a minute, sir. I think they're on to us. I heard that thin controller talking to the old grandpa at the quarry. Apparently, the transport minister's getting a bit suspicious about how we've been getting the railway's work. <laughs> In that case, we'll have to use more drastic action. Ah! Got it! George began explaining his plan to the others. Yes. Unlike the group's previous schemes, it had nothing to do with any unusual letters. But it met approval hands down. George, you're a genius. We'll do it. I'll inform the workers I'm sure they'll agree. Even if we have to force them. Days passed swiftly. By now, the little engines were having a really hard time trying to put up with both George and Ranger's remarks whenever they saw them. At last, Duncan lost patience. You're late, Duncan. <laughs> I can't help it. That range will get me waiting at the crossing. Claim me had a flat tire and it took us to ride 15 minutes to replace it. 15! You're lucky I managed to make up most of the time. Hmm. I can see that by looking at your passengers. They seem a little shaken. It's all that Ranger's fault. <sighs> I told you, Beard, he's got to be stopped. Yes, he's not giving up easily. How's Duke, by the way? Well, he's not broken down again yet. Looks as if he was actually mended this time when he was in the works. Yes, it was a wrong about being too old and useful. But Duncan had spoken too soon. Duke had just finished work shunting at the quarry and was on his way home. It had been a long day and he was feeling tired, but he tried to not let it get to him as he knew he was needed to deliver the artwork safely. His driver and fireman knew that they were in for a long night and were preparing a few refreshments to keep them going. Hey mate, did you get the bacon and eggs? Yep, and I got some bangers, a loaf of bread, and a case of mac and brown ale to go with it. <laughs> Should see us through the night if you know what I mean. Nice one. We're nearly there now anyway, We've just got the last bridge coming up. Hey, what's going on? The brakes aren't working! Whenever Duke's driver tried to apply the brakes, steam just hissed out the side of the cab. Duke, unable to slow down, shot through the yard and past the sheds at a dangerous speed. The thin controller was waiting for him at the station and was surprised to see him race straight through. Quick, use a handbrake! Brake driver! Brake! Brake! It was no use. Duke's handbrake was applied and he was unable to stop in time. He crashed through the buffers and came to rest on the ground beyond. Everyone gathered round and looked on in disarray. What? What? What happened? It's your steam brake, Duke. It sprung a leak. Steam's escaping through a hole in the pipe instead of making you stop. Lucky there's no serious damage. As soon as we get you back on the rails, we'll see if we can patch that hole up. Oh, it just had to happen now, didn't it? Everyone worked fast. Ivo here was quickly drafted in to help Duke back onto the rails, as soon as driver was welding up the hole in the steam brake pipe. Sadly, it wasn't fast enough. It's no good, sir. I can't make it steam tight. It's too dangerous to send him out now without working brakes. Botheration! And the special's due to arrive in 15 minutes. I should have known better than to depend on you, Duke. But, sir, how can I possibly be responsible for- Look, we've got an important delivery coming along shortly, and it must be kept top secret. What's happened to you isn't helping us one bit. I'm aware of that, sir, but what are you going to do about it? I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to send another engine along to take the train. Someone who is young, strong, reliable, and can keep a secret just as much as you can. Not some worn-out museum piece like you. But, sir... But nothing! I thought I could depend on you, Duke. 
but you've upset our arrangements. Now, let's see. My boy here is the only one with a fire still in his boiler. He'll have to do. The changes were quickly made, and Ivo Hugh rolled gently up at the platform of some empty vans. There had already arrived with the artwork from the mainland, and porters quickly set to work transferring the boxes from one train to the other. Within minutes, the precious cargo was loaded, and Ivo Hugh was ready to go. Ah, excellent work. Now you've just got to get this to the quarry in one piece. I'm too busy to come with you, unfortunately, but Sir Topham Hatt will be at the quarry to observe the arrival and storage of the painting. Now then, good luck, and mind how you go. Right away, mate. Right away. Come along, come along. Gently now, gently now. A good head of steam and a perfect fire, even clean and bright. Ivo Hugh started into the clear moonlit night. The vans rolled gently along the rails behind him, the signal lights shone green as they passed, and the driver and fireman feasted on the meat and ale that Duke's crew had left them. Everything was going smoothly, but I know for them, the train was headed for trouble. This plan of yours had better work, George. Of course it will, sir. I have never let you down yet, have I? Yeah, don't be so pessimistic, sir. It'll be the final nail in the coffin for this useless railway. Then we can all enjoy ourselves. This is it, everyone. Stand by with a signal, Roger. No! A workman quickly cut the cable, controlling a nearby signal. The signal dropped from clear to danger, taking Ivo Hugh and his crew by surprise. Oh! Red light! Stop! Stop, driver! The train quickly stopped by the side of the road. The crew got down from Ivo Hugh's cab and looked round. The surroundings were very quiet and very still. There wasn't even an owl hooting. Not a blade of grass moved. The guard quickly rushed up to see what was happening. What's going on? Why have we stopped? I don't know. For a moment, the signal was clear, but when we approached it, it dropped to danger. Perhaps it's just getting old and broke its own accord. Let's get moving. They're expecting us at the quarry. Don't move. <gasps> Wait, what the? What's going on? Who's there? Look here. I've got a gang of armed men and two of my vehicles here. If you all do as I say, then you'll come to no arms. Mr. Albert! I might have known. Silence! Now get back to your posts and drive on as far as I tell you to. And to make sure you don't play any tricks, we are riding with you. What are you going to do with us? You'll see. Now get to it! The crew and the guard reboarded the train with Mr. Albert and some of his men on board. George and Ranger sniggered as they drove past. Gotcha this time, you rusty pile of old iron! You'll make very fine scrap indeed by the time we're finished with you. Drive on! Got the double. The convoy headed on into the night, with Ranger running as close to the railway as the road would follow. George was left behind since he couldn't travel very fast, and he was needed to finish working on the road. Ivo, Hugh and his crew had no idea what they were in for, but given that they were outnumbered, they decided to do as they were told. Next morning, when they were getting steam up, the other engines noticed that Ivo, Hugh hadn't returned to his shed. Well, maybe he's had an accident. I should hope not. This railway depends on him just as much as anyone else. Oh, let's not fuss. Maybe he's had to work at the quarry all night. Hmm, perhaps you're right, Sir Handel. I'm afraid he's not, Peter Sam. <laughs> Sir! What happened? Last night, Ivor Hugh and his precious load didn't reach the quarry. He's disappeared! Precious load? What precious load? What? Uh, oh, I might as well tell you. He was taking a load of priceless paintings from an art gallery in London to a disused cavern in the quarry for safekeeping. As they were so valuable, the shipment needed to be kept secret and supervised very carefully. But the fat controller rang me this morning, telling me that he didn't arrive. And they couldn't find him anywhere. They've searched the tracks around the lake, but he's nowhere to be seen. Oh dear, whatever could have happened? I've no idea. I've no idea whatsoever. Duke, Peter, Sam, Renee, and Duncan, I'm sending you lot out to work as usual today. But whatever you do, keep an eye out for them. And any evidence that might lead us to them, let me know immediately. If London finds out that we've lost the paintings, we'll never hear the last of it. The engines were all worried, 
not only for the sake of Ivo Hugh, but for the sake of the railway. But regardless of their troubles, they tried their best to carry on regardless, with hope that everything would turn out for the best. The Duke was sent away to shunt in the quarry. But as he began to shunt loaded trucks into place, he noticed that Ranger wasn't waiting for him. Hmm, that's unusual. It's the first time that he hasn't been waiting for me. I wonder what he's up to now. Probably doing more reckless driving and looking for more of our work to steal. Ugh. Come on now, we can take some water while we're waiting. The water tower in the quarry lay at the end of a siding. Beyond the buffers, there was an old tunnel which had been blocked up with some old planks of wood. Duke's driver carefully backed him up towards the tower, but when he tried to apply the brakes, he found that they still weren't working properly. What's going on? Oh god, the patch hasn't worked! That pipe's still leaking! Brake, driver! Brake! 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 Please, brake! Ugh, <sighs> broke. That, that steam brake still, still needs some attention. attention. Just a minute. What have we bumped into? I don't know. Let's have a look. Goodness gracious! It, 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 it can't be... Can it? Good lord, that it is. What is it? Is that you, dude? Dive over you in the missing paintings! There you are! Oh, thank goodness you're here, dude. Oh, I thought I'd never be more pleased to hear your voice. I say, you do realise you're in the wrong place, don't you? I know. Look, look, dude, I can explain. There's a plot to take these paintings away. My crew and I were kidnapped last night and they brought us here where nobody would suspect. They left us a few hours ago, but they said they'd be back later to remove the paintings and take them away. Whoa, 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 slow down there, youngster. Who's they? You'll never guess. George, Ranger, Mr. Albert's in their game. I think Mr. Albert said something about selling the paintings secretly all over the world. So in London and here's the railways have lost all their artwork. They'd be in serious trouble could ruin them, leaving Mr. Albert to take control of us and turn us all into scrap. So that's it. I knew that they wouldn't just stop at taking the slate away. Where are your crew? Locked in the guards there. Goodness knows what the villains will do to them next. <laughs> it's there. Better get out of here while he's still got a chance. Duke's crew were about to agree, but then Duke remembered what the Finn controller had said about him the previous night. I should have known better than to depend on you, Duke. What's happened to you isn't helping us one bit. You've upset our reign. 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 Not very likely. Driver, cover me up quickly, please. What? The Duke? Surely you're not going to. We don't have a choice. The future of life on this island hangs in the balance. We've got to get the painting back safely. All right then, but it's at your risk. Duke's driver quietly crept over the tender, reached down to the coupling, and carefully coupled Duke to the wagons. All the time, Mr. Albert and his workers were getting closer and closer to the train. Listen up, men. I want you all to stand in line down under the tunnel and pass boxes down like a chain to the tunnel now. Rangers should be outside any minute now, ready to take them away. We'll then take them to a safer place so that I can start selling them off. And make us all rich! Just <laughs> 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 Maybe you've just one small problem with it, Earth uh, is that. Well, I even my eyes be playing tricks on me. Or, I believe they're getting away! Come on! I'm at it! Burn them and get away! Mr. Albert rushed up to the moving train and quickly jumped toward Ivo Hughes' cab. The workers couldn't keep up and all were left behind. Duke raced out of the quarry just as Ranger was entering it. What the heck? What's going on? Grandpa? Don't just stand there gawping, Ranger! Get after him! The workmen piled onto the back of Ranger, and the chase was on. Duke roared down the line with the fireman giving him every ounce of steam he could. Mr. Albert, who was still on Ivo Hughes' footplate, tried applying his brakes. It was fire out, there was no steam and no air to operate. Crap! I'll double the train on that other engine! He clambered out onto Ivo Hughes' cab roof and tried to pull his way onto the rooftop of the first truck. But then he saw an overbridge up ahead and quickly swung onto the side of the cab, just missing the bridge. Duke, meanwhile, was starting to have troubles of his own. Duke, your cylinders are leaking. I, I can't see where we're going. I'll tell you where we're going. You just keep giving me steam, everything you can. 
Where are we going? To Crowden's Gate, of course! We need to have these paintings over to the police before the criminals catch us! Well, how are we going to tell them? Um, I've got it! We can get one of those empty ale bottles, put a message in it, and then throw it overboard at the next station. Brilliant! Alright, I'll write the message, and you keep steam. The fireman shoveled coal and injected water into the fixed boiler as constantly as he could. Meanwhile, Mr. Arnold was having another go at climbing over the roof of the train to rescue. Keeping up that either, you rusty old kennel. I'll get those paintings from my neighbor, John Major, but I'll get them from the police. Oh, I don't know what to do. Morning, Duncan. I've heard that you got a spot of bother regarding last night's operation. Aye, aye, aye. Any sign I will cure the paintings? I'm afraid not. I've had plate layers walking the track for a mile in each direction, and they've come back saying that they've seen nothing. Wait, the, what's Duke doing here? He should be in the quarry. He's coming down awfully fast, and he's gone. He's gone. Ah! Oh, gee! Oh, oh. Why is he throwing his broken bits at me, fair? He's got eyes on you with him. Did you say he threw something at you? Yeah, he did. But it wasn't a broken piece of his, it was a glass bottle. And look, there was a note in it. Let's see. We have I've a few in the missing paintings, but we also have the thieves after us in hot pursuit. Please call the police and tell them to meet us at Proven's Gate Wharf as soon as possible. Right, there's not a moment to lose. By now, Duke was rapidly approaching the road. George was finishing off what remained of the roadworks when he heard a distant whistle. His driver looked back and noticed Duke rattling around the bed with the paintings. George quickly turned around, charged towards Duke, and swerved towards the track. As he did, Duke struck his front rollers with great force, rocking him out of control. The train pointed past, and George crashed the fence, over the rails, and into the cliff face, bringing rocks tumbling down. Go blast! So close! George! What's happened to you? What happened to me? Duke! That's what's happened to me! He's damaged me and now he's getting away! Quick! After! We're not far behind! Meanwhile, Mr. Albert was reaching Duke's tender. The fireman was just to put another shelf of coal on the fire when he noticed that he was on board. Look! It's Mr. Albert! He's trying to uncover us. Give me the shovel and you take over the controls. I'll take care of him. Keep it up, boy. We're nearly there. The driver scrambled onto his headland and started waving the shovel in front of Mr. Albert's face. Crack off his pennies of mine! You back on Rob, break your nose. We stole them. They're asked to sell and you'll all be out of my job. Not if we can help it. Take that! Look! There's the last bridge before the war! Break! Hold tight! Fun break hard, and Duke screeched to the wharf towards the end of the siding leading onto the main line. Ah! Duke crashed off the wharf and came to rest on a truck on the main line. The brake van had burst open, and Ivo Hughes' crew and guard tumbled out. Duke's driver and Mr. Albert landed on the coal pile, still wrestling over the shovel. But the wagons remained upright and undamaged. At that same time, Ranger and his group of workers raced into the yard, and the police immediately surrounded them. Oh, George, we need to clear the door. Clear the door. Clear the door. Clear the door. Mr. Donald H. Albert, you are under arrest for armed robbery and conspiracy to burglary. Crack! You are also charged with stealing an articulated lorry and forging unofficial letters from the Transport Ministry to claim supply work from the Scarlowy Railway. Oh, so that's how they took the slate traffic. I'm innocent. I'm completely here is all George's steamrollers! I dare to take the paintings and ranger over there and listen to the all operation being planned! What you have to say will be held as evidence in a case against you in court. You're coming with us, along with George and your lorry. Right. Foiled at the last minute. You haven't heard the last of this, you rotten rust buckets. We'll get you for this! Ranger and the other criminals were arrested and driven away. They all struggled in vain, but with no match for the presence of the law. Soon the yard was at peace, but Duke, still lying on his truck, was battered, bruised, and badly worn out. 
Peter Sam looked at him in disbelief. He wanted to cry because he knew what this meant. Oh, oh Grandpa! You were so brave and strong, but I, I don't know what's going to happen to you. I don't think the thing control is going to repair you this time. I feel like I've reached my end, young Peter Sam. I've had a long and wonderful life. You've all been such good friends, and I've had a great time working with you all. But now, I don't think I'll ever work again. You were great, Duke. I never would have been rescued if it wasn't for you. Well, he may have puffed his heart. <laughs> the engines felt very sad, because they thought the Duke and the engine had been a guidance to them for most of their lives, and never work, be seen or heard ever again. The thing controller came up to see them. What's the matter with you lot? They look as if we've been closed down. <laughs> we, we don't want you to be scrapped, sir. Yes, sir. He's a very bold engine, and it would be wrong to have him scrapped. Scrapped? Scrapped Duke? <laughs> oh, you must be joking. I wouldn't dream of doing that. <gasps> sir? Did I just hear you say... You certainly did, Duke. I've been looking for a good excuse to give you a full overhaul for months now. But uh, now that you are really in a poor state, I can safely say that this is as good an excuse as any. <laughs> he, he, he's going to be mended again, sir? Indeed he is, Peter Sam. Indeed he is. He's going to the works first thing tomorrow morning, and he's staying there until he's fully overhauled. Why, after all the effort he's put in today, it would seem wrong to scrap him. Mm. My goodness! Thank you very much, sir. That's very kind of you. No. Thank you, Duke. You recovered the painting safe and sound. That back controller will be pleased. Well, we were lucky to have found them, I suppose. I mean, if George, Ranger and Mr. Albert had got there first... Well... It would never have suited his grace. <laughs> <laughs> Duke spent many months at the works. He was given full boiler repairs. His cylinders were mended, his brakes were replaced, and he was given a new coat of paint. After a long time and lots of work, he came home to the Scarlowy Railway. This led to a chorus of cheers and whistles as he was eased back onto the rails. You know, Jim, Edward told me something about you a long time ago. What's that then, Peter Sam? He said, Duke may be old, but he's still full of surprises. And how right he was. Welcome back, Grandpa! Yeah! 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 Yeah!